Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on our gorgeous planet. <clears throat> Give yourself a little bit of gratitude and acknowledgement for dedicating an hour of your day to go within to do some work. To leave the story of Maya, maybe to look at the story of you from a, a new angle with the sole intention of recognizing who you are and abiding there. And then how does that show up in the illusion, in a clearer, heart-centered, authentic, pure way? What's the best version that our humanness can honor and the best version is not a value system that comes from any place in the world it will come from your divine essence that's what guides our way on and so make sure your body's comfortable dial in and see how it is <clears throat> What do you sense? Acknowledge what's going on in your body and let it go. How are you doing emotionally right now? Acknowledge what's being felt. even if it's a sensation and you don't quite have words for it. Acknowledge. Let it be there, give it permission to move and let it go. And how's your beautiful mind today? Is it running crazy loops? Is it thinking the same thoughts that it thinks a thousand times over every day? Are you able to go, be calm, it's okay. Can you give it a gentle, loving, shh, it's okay. See if you can. What we're going to work on today <clears throat> is in two parts. And it has to do with the stories that come in through social media, the news, television. And, you know, we've had, we've been fed stories of pandemic for a couple of years now. And just as it tends to lighten, the airways are talking about this war <clears throat> where Russia has invaded, invaded Ukraine. And I've noticed over the, I don't know, maybe the last seven or eight years that there's been an increasing emphasis on the belief that bad news sells. Bad news makes money. It's unlikely that good news stories are going to hit the mainstream airways unless some huge catastrophic turnaround happens. And so during this week, brought me to contemplate what, what does this, this intense suffering and negative story that comes into our orbit through the media, what, how is it helping us to awaken? 
everything is a movement towards awakening. That's one lens of perception that everything can be used to help us wake up. That's one side. But what I'm actually more interested in when I kind of thought through that, contemplated that part, what I became more interested in is like, actually, how do we approach it in the moment? What's, what's the best thing we can do in the moment so that, so that we don't that we don't reinforce the me, myself, I dualistic lens of perception in our own body mind mechanism. When we're watching the news, for example, when we're reading the paper, if you still have print coming to your door, is there a way that we can find a clear lens of perception that perceives the negativity that comes into us? So there are two there are two steps that we can take here. The first is I'd like to invite each of you to recognize what happens. What is my armor through which I filter stories of human suffering or injustices or just bad news? You know, what's the armor or the filter system, but it's, I, I think there's probably armor for most of us. How do we see it? So I want you to take a moment. Let's say you turn on the TV and you see pictures of, you know, families, women and children being stuffed onto trains in Ukraine and saying goodbye to the men of their family to stay fighting for Ukraine. And maybe you, you watch more global TV that talks about wars in fighting in Pakistan and wars in Somalia that are just not hitting some mainstream media channels, particularly in the US. There are wars all over the place on our planet. Pla planet at any one time. And some of them reach our airways. And the way they reach our airways is a, is a representation of what the collective responds to. So the collective responds to a particular type of story. How do you respond to the story? Are you part of the collective that gets glued into negativity, a sad story? Are, what happens? What happens for you? I'm inviting you to be really aware of what lens of perception is operating for you. And can we stand in an awakened state when we watch suffering that's going on in the world? that's brought into our homes via the media? What do we do about stories of climate change of, uh, and war, even if we just have the two of those? Now that the pandemic is receding, it's like, whoa, here's the next one right in, right in. And I might be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but it feels like we're entering into a cycle of where each piece of news is going to be more catastrophic and um, almost exciting in some weird way. Uh, the latest news, the biggest, the, um, and, and you know, do we respond with fear? Do we respond, how do we respond? This is what I'm after. Because if we can, if we can, there's two things we've got to do here today. One is to recognize how do I meet it? What lens of perception is here at the moment when I'm engaging in any global issue, any global issue? Now, we know we're fed the most negative stories. How do I greet this? How do I meet it in my system? And what would be a cleaner, clearer, more useful way that honors my true nature 
how can I stay there and watch global news and allow it to teach me about the true nature of human suffering? This is what we can learn. So we've got a couple of steps to take. So right now, I'm inviting you to just take a minute to think about what happens when I watch the news these days, mainstream news, for example, or what happens when I open emails that have their finger on the pulse around social inequality or the climate or indigenous cultures and how they're treated or like what what are you what what are you engaging in and how do you meet it so it's not so much what you're engaging in because each one of us has our own leaning there of personal interest how do you meet it how do you meet it is it with judgment anger rage does it make you helpless What's your armor? I'm going to call that armor or a filter system. You know, it's the same thing. No, it's like, what does it meet in you? If it's a filter system, you'll soak it up. If it's armor, you'll have a, I need to turn it off. I'm not watching it at all. Maybe you have war armor and you're like, I'm not engaging it in at all. What's that armor about? I want you to be really aware of what happens with you. Do I have armor? Do I have a filter system? And it gets in and impacts on my experience, my own experience of myself. Which is it? Do you have armor? Do you have a filter system? So the armor might, you know, it'll push it out. Turn it off. Enough, I can't take that. It's unjust, it, there's rage, there's anger. I feel helpless. I can't do anything about this. I want to do something about this. What can I do about this? And you spring into a reactive contributing or helping or praying or like, what happens? What's your armor? Or are you somebody with a filter system where it comes in and it impacts you? Maybe you soak it up. Maybe, maybe it really throws you off your center. You can share in the chat box if you like, but what's really important is that you find out within yourself, do I have some protective mechanism to keep it out? Do I actually let it in? And if I let it in, what does it do for me? What does it do to me? overwhelmed with helplessness. I'm not in control. If I could help, I would. I have a filter and I feel deep sadness, feeling helpless. My heart breaks for the victims. Triggers an opening in my heart that can be overwhelming at times. These are the comments in the chat box. Just going to give it another few minutes to see if you can, what happens for you? Do you have armor to make it bounce back? Do you have a filter and it comes into your system? Yeah, my reaction varies, Brenda says. I can't say that I always react the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And then to notice, okay, is it, like, is there a third option? When I was thinking about it during the week, it's, it's like there's armor and then there's, we soak it up. We push it out or we soak it up. When we're in the, when we're in the non clear abiding place, when it's just our humanness, when we're coming from the human only, 
I think it's just true, but if there's more, I'd love to hear. Deep sadness, frustrated that people believe the propaganda after two years of fear and sanit sensitization, yeah, with the pandemic, yeah. Yeah. I hear you, Alan, yeah. Depression. Do we protect ourselves from the suffering of the world? Is that what's going on? Do we believe somewhere that if we let it in and have an emotional response or an emotional reaction, one is soft and one is knee jerk, you know? Do we believe that if we have that emotional reaction that we're, that it's better than a piece of armor that protects us from it? I feel connected. There's less othering. I have almost a purient interest looking for the self-damage done to Russia while based on furious hatred for Putin. I want to believe that I can make a difference and move things towards peace. I want to be part of something that does this. We will be in half an hour. It feels like it is seen as loops of information that are not fed. Perhaps that is armor. Hmm. Agree with propaganda motive being spread. Yeah. Not feeding this inoculation of collective fear is what occurs here. Seeing through the demise of this broken system. I want to invite you to recognize that part of you, just some of you have shared, but I'm hoping that everybody has kind of recognized, yeah, that's what happens with me, or that's how I, how I meet the propaganda or news and the whole spectrum in between. I want you to recognize how you meet it. Do I keep it out? Am I protecting myself? Do I not wanna see it? Do I disengage? Do I turn it off altogether because it's, it's too much? Do I filter it in and, and it runs through my emotion system? I feel an ominous sense that it will get worse. I can sense that too, Antoinette. Hope it's not true, but I, I, I can hear that potential too. There is in place at times armor, but then I find myself wanting to be part of that which alleviates the suffering. I feel helpless and then I start to pray. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go into that stillness and we're going to Surround the piece of you, that the piece of your wiring, conditioning, your brain, the, the pattern that's in place that, that meets these negative stories, 
these painful sufferings. Whether they're true or not, exaggerated or not, doesn't matter. I'm after how you meet it. The part of you that is activated and that is currently in charge of how you meet negative stories, stories about human suffering, I, I'm inviting you to go into a deeper place so that you have compassion for that part of you, the part of you that is activated when you meet it. As long as that default is in place, there's a limitation to the usefulness because I, 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 I just have a knowing that the clearer we are, the more we abide in outside of all of it, the more light we bring to the planet. The, that's known here, and I'm hoping it's known within each one of you. I think it is somewhere. And so what I want you to do is first, we've got to drop into the stillness that's inside. Our mind has been very much engaged in the first part of our session here today. And we'll see it that, okay, that's the engagement capacity. That's my mind. That's the thing that works with concepts and explores and inquires into how do I meet the media? All right. And is my emotional center calm right now? Because it might have gotten scratched because of the habitual response of even talking about how we meet human sufferings, suffering that comes through the media, even talking about it will probably activate that same emotional response. See your emotional body, get some distance. Bless your beautiful mind. Bless your emotional center. Know that everything's okay. You're not your mind. You are not your emotions. You are the source where these manifestations come from. Let your attention fall back into silence, quietude, stillness. where light comes from. Source. Shows up as beingness. not engaged in any story, unchanging, at peace, independently, needing nothing, proving nothing, saying nothing. Delicious stillness deep within your being. If you can taste where I'm pointing to, let that essence be spacious. Let it get wider. 
Give it permission to penetrate your body. To inform and dance in your cells right now. your essence, that still silent place. Let it surround and hold and fully see the mechanism whether it's the armor, the filter, a bit of both. See that part of you that meets the stories of human suffering. Without judgment, with compassion, recognize the, the human defensiveness or helplessness or anger defensiveness resistance maybe restlessness let there be love and compassion, because your beingness can see, can um, hold. I'm inviting you to have two lenses of perception. You're standing in the silence within, in the peace within, and you're seeing how the armor and or the filter system within your body-mind mechanism, you're seeing it with love, compassion, understanding. The light that you are can pick up that armor or filter, can set it down. Let's heal it because it will have been something that you learned. It's part of how you learned to be in the world. Let's see if we can dissolve it. Totally dissolve it. Let your heart, your, your essence, the, the love that comes from your essence, Let it be receptive to whatever is going on there. Armor to filter. Deep understanding of the mechanism that has been used to date to perceive what's going on in the world. the version that we're fed of what's going on in the world. Does that stillness inside need to be protected? from stories of suffering. Does it need to be protected from stories of suffering? Does it need to have emotional reactions to stories of suffering?
does it need to personalize stories of suffering? Maybe your divine essence knows that global issues, human suffering, and the mechanism that might alter it as it's communicated to us. Your divine essence knows that each of those things, human suffering, global issues, and maybe how it's adapted for sensationalism, that all of those three things are a reflection. Your essence is those two. Your essence is manifesting those two. It's manifesting as global issues. Your essence is manifesting as human suffering. Your essence is manifesting as sensationalizing and dictating what, what your brain is fed. Your essence is okay with it. Your essence isn't reacting. It allows the, the collective to have its way. It allows the collective experience to, to agree that these are the stories and this is the right response and this is the inappropriate response and this is the socially accepted response. All of these variables of life, of experiences are okay with the deepest part of you. Your essence is showing up as those experiences and making them experienceable, making them happen. Now, is your human self sucked right in to the collective and totally lost in the experience of it? Is your mind being, I don't know, like um, it, being sucked in helplessly into that machine? Or can your awareness be in the stillness? And you're allowing the entire mechanism itself to awaken you. So that you, you have the direct experience of, ah, there's my humanness that can pick it up in this way, that can feel, you know, anger or wants to turn off the television or tune out some story or wants to help people, wants to pray. It's like, there's my humanness. Can I say yes to my humanness? Can I not kind of fully believe it, but allow this experience to open my heart and open my eyes to all of it? What would it be like not to have your usual way of reacting and responding, but to be abiding in a deeper lens of perception where you're containing your habitual human response, but there's no energy going to support it. because you're viewing from a wider lens of perception. Can you move towards 
where human suffering and beauty are equally welcome. There's the test to see if you're truly viewing from your divine essence. Something exquisitely beautiful, watching, watching a bee in, in a, a, a beautiful flower. The view of that perceived by your body-mind mechanism is viewed the same way from your divine essence as a horrendous image of human suffering. The open heart allows both to show up. Can you find that place in you? I can't find it for you. It's only you can do it for you. I can point. But this is about you having a felt sense of there's what I usually do. I need to engage in a, you know, a wider lens, an impartial lens, which isn't one that is another piece of armor. Oh, I'm detached. It's not real. I'm not talking about bypassing. That's big, mega ironclad armor. Not talking about that. I'm talking about a letting, letting your heart be open. And the the most efficient way that I can see is your own mechanism must be held in love. Your own way of engaging must be seen, honored, understood. Like we need to develop a wisdom of like, yep, that's how I usually see the news or the latest story. I'm, I'm very aware that, you know, the news is very modified um, and filtered for us. So while I'm calling it news, it, it, it's, um, it's gone through several layers in order to pull us into Maya. Why? Because this is the place of duality, because this is the place of experiences, because the, the deeper experience is aligned with the deepest suffering. And so to for Maya to continue, there will always be deep experiences. And so I want you to see that that mechanism of deep human suffering will always be there. It's the pinnacle of duality being believed when there's deep human suffering and no capacity to see it from a distance that's the illusion working at its best it's working at its best it's believing itself to be what's real really believing itself to be what's real there will always be human suffering now, if you're seeing it from the place of full-on believability, you're going to suffer too. And the part of you that suffers when you're watching stories of human suffering, I want you to see that from a deeper lens so that we bring an open heart, an open human heart to it. But it's informed by, by a deep spiritual wisdom that Human suffering is a reflection of the collective consciousness of duality, of duality. And it can be here. But my human self is not contributing to the machine. My human self has an open heart. My human self is held within what I am. And what I am, my essence, will see that beauty and human suffering are both welcome here in my vista. That's what I'm walking you towards.
I'm very aware of the um, the tendency that we have to choose a nicer lens of perception. That's not what I'm talking about. That's armor. That's filtering. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm, about, I'm talking about saying yes to all of it and viewing it from a place where your humanness isn't part of the machine of believable duality. Your machine has to be held in love. Otherwise, no transformation can happen within you. You've got to have wisdom and knowledge about how your mind works. And when you see how your own filter system or armor works, then you're not identified with it anymore. You can see, yep, that's, that's, I'm seeing that from a subjective perception. I'm seeing that from a habitual viewpoint. All right. My essence says yes to my own viewing mechanism. I can meet that and hold that in love. If you can hold your own mechanism in love, that's, that's where transformation happens. That's where your own perceiving, subjective perceiving mechanism gets filled with love and acceptance, is embraced. And when that energy touches your own perceiving, habitual perceiving mechanisms and your own subjective opinions and emotions and storyline around human suffering stories, when it's penetrated with what arises from deep within you, then your attention and your identification is no longer with it. It can be here. And so can the full spectrum of global issues. Global stories can be there. They're understood to be what they really are. You're not caught in the subject of right or wrong. Your attention is no longer feeding the machine of negativity, which is what which, which is what is essential for media to sell. It needs your attention. It needs you to believe it. It needs you to be hypnotized. It needs you to be addicted into that negativity. Come into your deepest heart. And all of those stories can be there and be viewed by you without you being addicted to the negativity of it. Do you see? It can be there and you are untouched. But the only way you can do it is by knowing how, how, um, how the, your trained body, mind, emotional center has been trained by, our, by information that's fed to you. It's been molded in a certain way to engage and to consume it. And if you can really recognize that mechanism within you, then you no longer will identify with it. But you have to love it, soft, soften it, own it, be aware of it. Now you're no longer sucked in. I would love a nod if I'm making some sense. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's, that's the challenge for this Jack woman is like, okay, I, I, I gotta find words for how this works, for how this matrix works. How, how do I find words and, and direct a pathway? for you all to, to, to know yourselves within yourselves. It's the direct experience. I'm not interested in giving you a concept. I wanna give you a tool for you to use. And we have plenty examples of where to find material to practice this. No resistance to the sweep of it all.
Yeah. Even the so-called reality of the divided reality changes. Yeah. Yeah. Not to go for a preference. Uh huh. Yeah. And so you might still take action and send money or supplies to Ukraine. You might go on to, you know, BBC World Service or some other uh, less, less biased news feed or an NPR version of a PRI hub. Um, depending on where you are in the world, know that there are biased news networks and there is some re honest reporting still left in the world. I hope, I think. And so choose what you listen to, huh? But practice, practice. Okay, there it is. I'm turning on the news. A lot of drama going on, a lot of stuff that's like pulling me into the story. All right, so can I see my human mechanism? How's my emotional center? Is that activated? Can I see armor defending me from it? Or am I filtering it and let it come in? Hold your beautiful self. Hold that habitual way of engaging and feeding into the, the dualistic machine. Let it be here, let it be held. And open your divine eyes and heart to the full spectrum of love, of beauty, of human, save, human suffering, and of a planet that looks like it could go down the toilet. Can you let it all be here? All of it. Let it all be here. Can you find a place within you if you take an image right now of something horrendous, you know? Rape of a child, like something horrendous. Can you, there's my human response and I can go deeper. There's the part of me that plugs into the machine of, of, of story and the, and the, you know, the refined way that we have, the socially accepted way, the politically correct way to respond. Come on, go deeper than that. Go deeper than that. All these value systems of what's the right way to respond to something, sure. Sure, that end, and so even if you're somebody who's been, you know, well trained in 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 empathy and um, yeah, the, an accepted way to view something. Even if you're well trained, it's like there's my human brain with its educated response to a horrendous story of human suffering whether it's an educated response or whether it's still shaking deep personal trauma where you're making somebody else's story shake up a similar experience in you. Either way, that's your human learned response. Hold that part of your brain in love, in acceptance, allow it to be there. Don't identify with it and let that be the only viewpoint that you're working from because now you're sucked right in and you're part of the machine step back step back yeah you won't be adding to the suffering when you're viewing from a wider lens the wider lens you will know it because it will honestly 
have the same response to beauty and suffering. It will have the same response. Let your eyes be open to global issues. Let your heart be open to global issues. The me, myself, I will put up armor, will create filters. But your essence, your divine beingness, has love and compassion for that human mechanism in you, but does not buy into it doesn't buy into any of it, knows that what you are has created every strand of this complex world that we live in, that is a reflection of what we really are. That is what we are playing in manifestation, believing its own experiences. Stay in the awareness of what you really are. Stay in the awareness of what you really are. Stay in the awareness of what you really are. Be sure not to deny the way your brain views stories of the world. That must be included, that must be held within the, the big spaciousness of your divine light. You're all of it, you see. You're all of it. Even the parts that your brain says are terrible. And it's wrong that this happens and there's no need for that suffering and it's unjust. And if we could get rid of the narcissists in the world, if there wouldn't be so much suffering. And your essence is creating your opinions. Your essence is creating the person you're giving out about. Your essence is creating the experience of horrendous suffering. Showing up as these experiences just because just because, just because. Let your heart open wide, your divine heart open wide. It has to be open wide in order to hold your, your you know, your, your human habitual responses and being willing to see and say yes, to whatever global issue there is. No defense mechanism at all. The personal I will have a defense mechanism. Let both pain and beauty be seen without resistance. Your brain can't do that. Let the pain and the beauty of your mind, the pain and the beauty of your emotional biography, the pain and the beauty of your body, tensions and stories that are held there. Let all these parts of you be seen without resistance. That'll open the heart. You can't be close to your own mechanisms of how you operate in the world and be open to stories of the world. You can't. You have to be open to the pain and suffering of your body, your emotions, your stories, how your brain, how your filtering system, how your armor operates in the middle of awful suffering. The pain and beauty of the personal you must be met without resistance in order for the heart to open. 
that might be the most important sentence. The pain and beauty of the personal you must be held without resistance, seen, understood, without any resistance at all. That'll open the heart. when you don't need to use the filter system of the me, myself, I, you're wide open. You're wide open to saying yes to all that shows up. You can hear and see and allow every global issue to show up because you're viewing it not from the pain and beauty of your body-mind mechanism, but you're, that's held and you're viewing it from your divine essence. Freedom lies there. Freedom lies there. Freedom lies there. And you're no longer contributing to human suffering by being part of the, the dualistic machine to to reinforce the reality of suffering when someplace else it's you're doing all of that. Let that be seen to you, shown to you. That's my spiel for today. <laughs>